What's going on, Charles Botenston? So I actually just recorded this entire video, but my mic was not on, and I should know because on my monitor it shows if the mic is actually moving and the audio levels are moving, but what are you gonna do? I actually, I'm glad that I did that because this is a, a very deep subject, and where it came from, you know, a lot of people say, you know, like, Charles, where do you get, get your, your ideas for your, um, your videos? And the, the main, way and reason that I get so many ideas. I have literally pages of ideas of what to talk about. I just don't have enough time and I don't monetize the audience or I don't monetize you guys. So it's, it's like I put out videos when I really have something good to say now. I used to really pump out a ton of videos and I really do apologize. But going back to where I come out with it, I, I, I'm so... Uh, so just curious in the world, just the smallest things. You know, people say, you have to get married by 30. You have to get your job in order by 25. And I always question those things, like why? You know, like why do I have to get married by 30? And then, and that always leads into the answer. You know, you know, women by 30, you want to at least be thinking about or have your children because obviously they're on a time clock. Men, hopefully that your, your spouse, because they're looking to have kids at that age, you've you know, gotten together or at least dated so you understand what you want for the rest of your life. So there, it makes sense. And that's the thing is that when someone sees me 32 years old and they're like, hold on, so what, you're not married and you don't wanna really get married right now, let alone be in a relationship? So they question that which is fine. However, questioning is different than being okay with it. So then I, I, I started questioning uh, retirement. So I, people say you have to retire by 65, or if you are, I think NYPD, I think it's 20 or 25 years, or FDNY, it's 20, 25 years, and God bless their souls, they're putting their life on the line. And when I look at it, I say, why 65? So I started going back into the research, and when 65 was the age of retirement, it was because you only lived, the average age at the time was 67. So you only lived two years after you retire, which is insane if you think about that. Insane. You have a 65 year old that in two years, in 600 days, 700 days, you will not be here. That's crazy, you work your whole life. So when people complain and they, they have all these excuses, it's like, you're gonna be living a lot longer than all the people that came before you that paved the way for you, okay? That built the roads, that built the infrastructure, that invented electricity, that wired everything, that sent satellites to the moon, you know? So I started questioning that. Okay, now I understand. However, the actual rate of dying at 65 is very rare. The, obviously, the average age has been pushed up. I don't know if it's gonna stay there because of just the gluttony and the lack of activity that people, gluttony of food and the lack of activity of not going to the gym. And yes, the average age has increased. And obviously, and what's his name, Ray Kurzweil calls singularity. Singularity is essentially saying that as you age, there's gonna be a point that as you age, the technology to keep you alive forever is gonna approach. And he's thinking, I think, you know, he's throwing out some ridiculous statistics of like within 10 years. But then I recently heard that he's thinking 20, 25 years is that the rate of healthcare, the rate of technology where someone can literally take something of your, off of your skin and grow that intestine or do a blood transfusion or whatever you need, a new something, they'll be able to grow in a lab and give it to you in your own body instead of taking someone else's where your body may not actually, they'll, your body will reject it. So where does this all come from? So there's, there's this book out there, it's called The Denial of Death. It's a great book. You can pretty much just get everything from the internet. That's, you don't need to actually read it. But in The Denial of Death, they bring up that, especially males, males want to leave their, their imprint. And it's not really for that generation. It's for their imprint in the future, that imprint of donating so much money to a school that they build out the business school you know, the, the Botenston Business School or the wing of nursing on behalf of Deborah Downing or whatever. And it's, it, it's really the denial of death is that we don't want to deny death, but we ultimately know we're all going to die. You know, if Ray Kurzweil is correct, singularity, I don't know. But 
if we don't deny death, that means that we're really just not living to not only the fullest, but the denial of death is leaving something behind that we can see for other generations or other, other generations can see that we are alive. So in other words, when we donate money to a school and they build out a building on behalf of that, like in college, there is Campbell Hall. And Campbell was a big donor to my school, which is your college of Pennsylvania. I know you've never heard of it. However, it's, uh, it, it honestly transformed me, uh, your college. I, I in debt a lot to that school. But Campbell wanted, the, his, wanted his name on the building. So he, he donated enough money to the school to build the building. And his denial of death was that people were going to learn in his building so he was leaving behind an imprint of himself, which got me to thinking legacy. Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this all the time is legacy. And it's so easy to get wrapped up in this world of just going through life and you have 10% of your life, 10% of your life is, and this is what my life, I, I try and just skew my life of only 10% of my life is just bullshit, which is social media, and just stupid, dumb things that distract me. In other words, it's my, it's my outlet, 10, 10%. But the thing is, because social media, because of our cell phone, because of this device, we literally have the majority of our time is now being taken up by that. And there is no legacy being thought of. So there's this dichotomy where you, you, you work so long and so hard and you know you're gonna die, yet you try and distract yourself from the, the actual ramification of dying. Okay, so you're distracting yourself and most people don't wanna talk about the subject. Most people are not comfortable talking about death, but if they don't talk about everyone that's successful understands they're gonna die and they use that as a motivation. They use that as something that they can just go through their life knowing that at one time they will not be here. So they wanna leave their legacy in a positive way. Ray Dalio, here's an example. Ray Dalio has broken his life down into, into thirds. The first third of his life is understanding what he wants to do. The middle third is actually doing what he wants to do. In other words, the first part is learning, the second part is doing and creating and building wealth, and the third part is giving all of it back. You know, you obviously have listened to all the billionaires that have said, I'm gonna be giving all my money back or the majority of my money back and creating something. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they're doing incredible, um, massive things on a philanthropic, and that's the way it should be. Philanthropic scale that not many people can do. However, that's the way that life should be, is that you build it up, you get all of this, this wealth or this, this, this ability to actually give back in the last third. So my parents, they, they volunteer at the Veterans Association Hospital out on Long Island. My mom also gives back in many ways when she's down in Florida where she teaches at an inner, inner city school. She was a teacher for 26 years. So it's one of those things that if you are not thinking about your legacy, you're gonna distract yourself day to day with bullshit that doesn't even matter that's building someone else's legacy. You're building someone else's legacy by distracting yourself. So this is what I'm saying, is that if we are not cognizant of how we spend our time, what I'm talking about right now in this video is macro. How do you spend your time, or I'm sorry, how do you, how do you spend your vision and your, your goal setting and your, your legacy? How are you spending that on the macro level affects my, all my other videos, which is how do you eat? How do you think? How do you make sales calls? What's your motivation? What's your influence? You know, those are on the micro levels. Do you exercise? Here's the benefits of exercising. Because if you die before, you can leave your legacy why were you here? Why, like, and I'm not saying that in a condescend, condescending way, but you have to think about it. Why were you here? No one, no one in any generation has ever had the ability to leave a legacy like you can. You can leave a writing legacy with a blog, an audio legacy with a podcast, video on YouTube, and it's gonna be there forever. You know, as Ray Dalio talked about in the book, he said, imagine if we all had Carnegie's principles or Rockefeller's principles or JP Morgan or Steve Jobs? What if we had and they themselves actually produced those principles? And that's what Ray Dalio said is that he wants to be known not only for these principles that he's produced, which is an insane book, but he also wants other people to put their principles into a book. And I think that is an amazing idea. 
So much so that I actually, I already had something written out. I, I, and I was gonna, you know, put it on Amazon or whatever, but I'm, I'm just gonna put it on as a free ebook. And I already have the principles written out, okay? And I made it into video form, and you guys have already seen it. If you go back and you see self-development or personal development, uh, what I've learned in it or something like that, I forgot what it's, what it's named, but I, I have about, I don't know, 200 principles that I've just thought about. And I just said, this is what I've learned over 10 years of personal development, hundreds of thousands of dollars, just, you know, tens of thousands of hours watching it. So your legacy is everything. Your legacy could be the smallest thing, which is leaving behind all of, if you don't have the money, leaving behind time of volunteering overseas or in this country, or if you have money, is that building out something that will last beyond your actual living here. So that's why I'm, that's the, when people say, you know, against the 1% and things like that, like what, what if Bill and Melinda Gates, and that was with the government, would the government be doing as good of a job as Bill and Melinda Gates? No, they waste money. It's way too big, the government. It's just, it, it, they, would, they would find ways to not use it correctly. They would line their pockets. Bill and Melinda Gates has, are taking their own money that they earned and they are giving back. So that's where I wanna go, is, is make so much money in my 30s and 40s that when I reach my 50s and 60s, I'm already thinking about how do I actually give this back and for me, I know it's gonna be education. I know for me, it's gonna be producing a ton of content. But for you, it could be your time or you're your just an amazing mother that, that didn't have the resources, but you, you were able to raise a child that goes on and, to do, and, to, and does what your legacy wanted to be if you had those resources. It doesn't need to be big. You know, what, what's that quote that it says, if everyone swept their, their front stoop, the world would be clean. If everyone's, you know, I see people just, just throw litter on the ground, just throw it on the ground. And I'm just, I haven't yet, I don't think I've actually said anything. I, sometimes I say, oh, excuse me, you dropped something. And they're like, oh, oh, okay. And I'm like, nah, they meant to actually drop that. But if, and that could be a small thing. But if you're in, in the world of three areas, and I'll talk about this right now. Number one is distracting yourself where the outlet to your job the outlet to your life is more important than your life or your mission or your job. As David Data says in The Way of the Superior Man, your mission, your drive, your focus, your why you're here on this earth. If your outlet of watching the Kardashians, of social media, of whatever, is, is more important than what you're actually doing in life, you're gonna regret things. You know, there's that video, I, did, I, I mentioned this in the, in the previous video that unfortunately got deleted. There's a video and they, they go through the centurions that are still alive. Actually, probably about six or seven of them. Centurions are people that have lived over 100 years. And they said, oh, what advice? And they go on for about 10 minutes. It's an amazing video, highly recommended. It probably has 5 million views. And they asked the question, do you have any, uh, what regret do you have? Not do you have any regrets, but what regret you do, do you have? And one of the uh, women that answered, it was very interesting because she said, I don't have any regrets. And you're thinking you've lived, I think she was 102 years old, 102. And she goes, I feel like I'm like 70. So look at this video, not as entertainment, but be like, okay, so have a younger personality. There's plenty of research that if you feel that you're older than you are, you will age. If you feel that you are overweight, you will become overweight because you'll, you'll want to make sure that evidence in your mind is actually supported by overeating, not going to the gym, things like that. If you age, that's because you feel that you're older. For me, I feel like, like I'm 32, I feel like I'm 17. And that's the biggest thing is that I do these mini things of your mindset is very important. This is how you eat. This is how you approach a pretty girl. This is how you ask a guy out. This is how you do all these things. And I'll have a relationship one about men and women. I've done enough research on that. That the macro of your legacy is intact. Your macro of being able to do what you want to do with the energy that you want to have at that age. Okay, so they asked her, she goes, I had a beautiful marriage. He passed away, you know, three or four years ago or whatever the case was. But she said something interesting that also hit me, which is that 
She said the one thing that she regrets, which she had no control over, is she lost her, one of her twins at birth. And I started to think about it. It's like, we don't have gratitude. And if we do, we don't either show it or we don't, we don't maybe it's, it's just publicly shamed. I have no idea. But our gratitude to healthcare and the people that came before us and how, light, how easy life is right now, like, it's amazing. Like, it was a real possibility that when you were born in the early 1900s, was only 100 years ago, and we've been around for billions of years, so that's nothing, that you could lose your child. And it was just like, it was just a real thing. It was just a lot of people did. That's why you had to have a lot of babies. And then our healthcare got a little bit better, and then our childcare got better, and our nutrition, and things like that. And now we're going the other spectrum, which is we're overeating, and now there's this, this fat acceptance. It's like, no, it's a health problem. You should not be doing this because you're not going to be living that long. You're going to get type 2 diabetes, your stroke or a heart attack are real possibilities, high cholesterol in your life. And when you have kids and you can't play with them, I have a friend and his dad was so overweight and he, he didn't really play with them because his dad was so overweight. He couldn't like pick them up or throw the football with them or play hockey or do things like that. Like I want to be throwing my kids around and throwing the ball with them, taking them to football games and things like that. Ah, oh, so... The micro of all these other, that's why, you ha that's why you do what you do. That's why you, you, you get a job that you relatively like, that you can build up the finances or the time to later in life give back. That's really why we're here. There is no true reason we're here. Everything is, uh, there, there is no reason. You know, a lot of people will take that as apathetic and just not do anything. I take that as, Listen, if we're here and there is meaning, as Elon Musk has pointed out multiple times, that we have to be a multi-planetary species to start something on another planet. And he goes, at least I'm setting the stone or setting in motion the, the system that it's like Edison. Edison had no idea that electricity would be in batteries or I could be looking at my camera right now and I'm like blinded that I just did that. However, Look at your legacy. I know we're 17 minutes in. This could have been a shorter video, but this is all about lifestyling. Styling your life around your priorities, okay? And your priorities hopefully are health, number one or two. You know, relationships and health should be number one or two. And obviously money. The reason I say around your priorities, those are really the three areas. What are your relationships like? What is your health like? And what, is, what are your finances? What are you doing? Are you making the money? Are you saving the money? Are you giving your money away? Are you buying meaningless shit that you're never gonna use? Are you actually creating value in the world? Going to your health. What are, you, are you moving? Are you standing up more than you're sitting? Are you expending as many calories, if not less, than you're taking in? Are you eating too much sugar? Are you brushing your teeth? Are you, you know, basic things. With relationships, are you actually approaching that pretty girl, that, that, that handsome guy? Are you asking them out? Or are you sitting behind a computer? Are you just talking about it? Are you not actually taking any action? I hope that kicked your ass because that was me. All right? So I'm going to set you guys off from here. Lifestyling your legacy. Micro day-to-day -day is your habits and, and persistency and consistency. And the macro, the overarching, is your legacy. Why are you here? What are you going to leave when you're not here? So have an awesome day. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for all of your comments. What do you guys want me to talk about next? Talk to you soon.